behind the pilot seat. The fan is powered through a shaft, which connects it to the engine in the back. During forward flight, the fan is shut down and the air is forced out the back. Perhaps the most interesting proposal came from a joint U.S.-British design study. British Aerospace and what was then McDonnell Douglas unveiled their joint strike fighter concept in the summer of 1996. The design seemed normal except for one thing. It didn't have a tail. At least it didn't have a tail like any other plane around. An airplane's vertical fin is what gives it stability during flight. By using horizontal tails instead, the U.S.-British Joint Strike Fighter was lighter and stealthier than conventional planes. It also promised to be far more nimble than conventional fighters. But in aviation, nothing is gained without a cost. The tailless design was highly unstable. Engineers sought to overcome this with a unique approach. They would harness the thrust of the engine to keep it under control. When the plane began to lose control, the engine nozzle could vector the exhaust up, down, or side to side to keep the plane on the right track. The tailless joint strike fighter was radical. In fact, it was too radical for the Defense Department. At the end of 1996, the idea was abandoned. But lately, a similar concept has re-emerged. Not as a fighter, but a small experimental plane called the X-36. At first glance, the X-36 looks like the canceled Joint Strike Fighter, but actually, it's even less conventional. Not only does it lack a vertical tail fin, it's got no tail at all. The X-36 is formally known as the Tailless Fighter Agility Research Aircraft, a program funded jointly by NASA and private industry. The goal design a prototype fighter with little drag, unmatched stealth, and gut-wrenching agility. The X-36 program isn't the first time NASA has explored bizarre designs in search of maneuverability. During the 80s, they flew the X-29, which had forward swept wings. The idea is simple. Make a fighter inherently unstable, and it will be able to move in ways nothing else can. With the X-36, engineers sought to prove that a radical shape could actually work in the air. But this time, they didn't have the money to spend on a full-size aircraft. So instead, they built one that was only a quarter the size. The X-36 is 19 feet long and only 3 feet high. Power comes from a small Williams turbofan engine. Fully fueled, the X-36 weighs about 1,300 pounds. The X-36 won't have a pilot, at least in the conventional sense. It's flown from a virtual cockpit back on the ground. Here the pilot looks at the computer-generated image on the horizon. On May 21, 1997, the X-36 took off from Rogers Dry Lake at Edwards Air Force Base, California. As the X-36 broke ground, NASA engineers knew they had a controllable plane. From his virtual cockpit, NASA pilot Larry Walker took the X-36 up to almost 5,000 feet. The plane handled so well, he decided to try out a couple of rolls. NASA engineers scoured through data as it was transmitted back in real time. From his virtual cockpit, Walker again pulled up the nose and carried out a quick roll.
The X-36 may be the shape of things to come. Using split ailerons and thrust vectoring instead of a tail gives a fighter better stealth and maneuverability. But there's something else about it that some military planners find interesting. Here, NASA uses a virtual cockpit because the X-36 is just a model. But future full-size combat planes may be flown the same way. A pilotless fighter could fly at G-forces beyond the physical limits of a human. And more importantly, no one's life is put at risk. The pilot would fight enemy planes from the safety of a virtual cockpit, hundreds or even thousands of miles away. The idea is controversial, but as technological barriers continue to fall, the only thing standing in the way of the pilotless fighter may be the pilots themselves. The F-22 Raptor was designed for stealth. All of its missiles and fuel tanks will be carried inside hidden away from enemy radar. But stealth is just part of the equation. The other is speed. It will give us what we call super cruise, an ability to cruise at high supersonic speeds for a sustained period of time. Uh, today's airplanes can't do that. They can go real fast, but when they're doing it, their gas gauge is going like that. Uh, in this airplane, we'll be able to sustain those high speeds